Hello, Gene. How are you? Hey, Gene, how are you? Good, buddy. Welcome. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy 80 degree weather oh, Monday. Beautiful, right? Yes. Gorgeous. Uh, you know, global warming, <laughs> uh, murder hornets, COVID. Uh, and I heard thunder last week. And I said, my niece said, is that thunder? I said, it could be Godzilla. You know, <laughs> it could be. Go. You never know. Yes. Never Hi, know. everybody out there in social media land. Uh, good evening and welcome to another episode of Reminiscing with Gene DiNapoli. I'm your host, Gene DiNapoli, with my producer, Mike Dorita, right there. Everybody, I want to welcome you. Mike, how was the weekend? It was a very nice weekend. went very fast. I, we, I went up to an undisclosed location. And undisclosed. Okay. Undisclosed location for a little uh, um, anniversary, a little weekend, and then we're back. Well, happy anniversary. How yeah. many years has it been? It's, uh, six. Six years. Yeah. Wow. God yep. bless you. Six years. Yep. Uh, have you ever had a fight that you won? Nope. Okay. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. What about what about you? Uh, no. <laughs> twenty three years and twenty two years, and I'm still losing every battle. <laughs> How was your weekend, Gene? You know, really relaxing. Uh, I was supposed to film this week, uh, but one of the actors got COVID. So they postponed it till uh, the next month. So I had a couple of nights off and we went out and celebrated uh, our friend Howard's birthday, one of our sponsors. Right. Uh, so we did that Friday and Saturday. And then yesterday I had the pleasure of performing at an 80th birthday party uh, in an undisclosed location nice. in Long Island for, wow. uh, for a guy named Bud. So Bud, we want to wish you a happy 80th. Happy birthday, uh, Bud. You know what, Mike? When he walked in the room, I thought the guy was 60. Wow. Yeah, he really uh, shocked me. Uh, and then today, you know, um, the singing jobs are, are, you know, far and few in between. But uh, today I got to do another acting job. Yeah. And uh, there was a gentleman on the Discovery Channel called Billy Leroy, who had a show called uh, Baggage Battles. And now he's got a show called Billy Buys Brooklyn, which is an antique show. And I played a, one of his customers today. And that's a picture he is showing today yeah. in Brooklyn about 11 o'clock in the morning. We did this. Wow. So we, very nice. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully it's going to materialize into more and more stuff. So we're right. very happy for that. Maybe there's a recurring role for you as, as that same customer. Uh, I, You know what? The, the casting agent actually said, oh, when you shave the beard, uh, let me know right away. We'll put you in another show. Nice. So that's good, yeah. That's the way to do it. Yeah. Mike, I want to talk about uh, some of our sponsors. Yes. So, of course, we're thankful to all our sponsors who are friends of ours and believe in our show. Our mm -hmm. show is seen across the United States of America and some countries, as is Mike's individual shows. So if you take an ad out with us, it helps us uh, promote the show better. We don't make any pocket money, but the more we make, the more we put into advertising. And you wind up on this show and a couple of Mike shows. You wind up on YouTube. And uh, we just got picked up by ItalianAmericanRadio.com. Oh, that's great. Yes. Yeah, so all our shows, our MP3s will be listed. So people will hear it all over. So if you want to promote your business, big or small, this is the way to go. So the first one we're going to talk about is our friend Wally, Mr. Positive at Pure Organic dry cleaners on uh, 3166 East Tremont Avenue in the Bronx. Buy, uh, pay for three items, get your fourth one free by mentioning the podcast. Our right. next one is our birthday boy, Howard and Karen. They own Dream Destinations Travel. All your cruise and honeymoon and vacation plans. Uh, if you mention our podcast, you get a, uh, a gift certificate, a gift card, either a uh, 50 or $100, depending on the package. Then for those of you that are into CBD oils and gummies and pills, our friends at sweetheal.com. 
uh, the Internet's premier CBD business. Mention my name. Get 20% off all orders and a free gift. Nice. And last but not least for tonight, our friend Francisco, also known as the Creative CPA. Fran has different ways for you to get the most of your money, be it taxes, accounting, or estate planning. All of our sponsors are on our page. Reminiscing with Gene DiNapoli. There's a tab that says offers. Click it and you'll see everybody there. And just tell them you're with us and they'll treat you as best as they can. Very nice. So, Mike, yes, you know, I know you've been in the business a long time, but I think you've been having more fun with me over the past two months. You have met Joey D, Vito Pacone. Last week, one of the best guests we could ever think. Billy Vera, uh, Louis Venaria, our friends from Kingpin. I mean, the list goes on and on. Tito Puente Jr., the Italian songstress Christina Fontanelli. Tonight, Mike, you're going to meet a guy who is the only actor to have the distinction. Now, follow me on this. To have a speaking role in the original Godfather and a speaking role in a TV show called The Sopranos. One considered the greatest TV, TV show of all time and one considered the greatest movie of all yeah, time. I, I've heard of those, Gene. You've got, you heard of them a little bit? I've heard of those, yeah. Great. So, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> so you could put this, get your pen ready, because I'm going to write everything down. So, Mike, will you please bring in my very, very dear and close friend, a tremendous actor, Mr. Lou Martini Jr. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Tremendous. My favorite word in Gene DiNapoli's vocabulary. Hi. He only for certain people at certain times. So I'm going right. to give me a tremendous inter- introduction. But I got a beef right off the top, guys. I got a what? beef. I got a beef right off the top. What? That picture you have behind yeah. with me with a shirt, a T-shirt and shorts on, everybody else in suits. I got to explain that. I don't know where you got that picture. Well, I was around the corner with Vinnie Pastore having pizza or something. We're just shooting. I think we were doing a workshop on something. And a couple of fans had one like dinner with the Sopranos kind of thing. Now, this is a few years ago. The show, the show had been off the air a long time. But it was Tony Darrow, and I can't see who else in the picture. Tony, uh, Vinny, Dominic Chinese. Dominic Chinese. Uh, uh, my dear, dear, dear brother, Anthony Rubistello. Oh, Rubo, Rubo, yeah, your chair is blocking where Rubo yeah. is. Yeah, Gene, let me bring that up. I have a. a, no, there, a you go. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, Rubo. Yeah. My love and Miss Rubo. Yes. And that's uh, that's Arthur Nescarell, right? Yeah, I believe. Arthur Nescarelli, right. And Tony Darrow, the great Tony Darrow. Yes. So what happened is, is uh, Vinny says, look, the guys are having a dinner with these Sopranos fans around the corner. Let's go say hello. I'm like, Vinny, look at me. I'm not going. Come on. I can't go say hello in t shirt. Come on. Come on. So he dragged me around into the restaurant. We wound up sitting down and having dinner with these great, great Sopranos fans. But as you could see, I was totally overdressed. <laughs> so we, we, we thought you just wandered, wandered in there, maybe. That picture. Yeah, it looks like I wandered in off the street. Well, you know, I did put it up there because you do have a beautiful looking niece. And of course, it's all about the Rubo was in the picture. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Gene, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop off for a little bit. Okay, but, uh, you have something uh, editing to do. No, actually, I just, I, I, I didn't receive the files, Lou. I, I didn't get them. Okay, let me check the retransfer again. Okay, because it so said I'll, that it went through. Yeah, yeah it did, for some reason it didn't, it didn't come this way yet. So once I get them, I'll work on them and I'll bring them up. Okay. So, um, great. Have fun and just. Uh, call me if you need me. I have some pictures, Gene. Just yell them out and I'll. You got on. it, Mike. Thank you. We'll see you in a little bit. Okay. So, Lou, can you do two things at once? I'm trying to minimize you, <laughs> full screen, which is impossible. You cannot minimize the great Gene Denapoli. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell is the we transfer? I tell you, Lou, we have gotten comments already. Uh, friends of ours who knew that you were on the cruise with us, Debbie and Jackie. Uh, some new friends you're going to meet soon enough, Frank and Mike and uh, Lucia, who's a wonderful face. Hey, that, that was great. That was that was a great crew going on the cruise yeah. with you guys. That was my my very first cruise. Yes. It says, it says it's still transferring. That's almost over. Okay. Release that to Mike. It's 80, almost right. 100 megabytes of one yeah. gigabyte uploaded. So, 
All right, so I'm going to push that to the side. Okay. Okay, and yeah, then if it's one gigabyte, it, it might take more than this show just to download it. Oh, together. really? It's at eight ninety so, megabytes of one. Eight my okay. So we'll, I'll let you. I'll send you a message once I uh, I get it and ready to go. So goodbye again, okay. guys. After. One, one more question, Mike. Before you go, what if I just send one file then? Because I sent like three videos. I just uh, let's see how this goes. So in a couple of okay. minutes, if you don't get it. I'll just send one. That's right. all. That's all. And if anything, we'll 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 turn this into a training video. There okay. you go. All right. <laughs> Computer, yeah. Computer 101 with Martin. I know, right? Oh my in front God. of in front of all of our fans. So Lou, um, uh, doing my dude, you know, we're friends. It's going on, I think, uh, it could be 14 years, possibly. It's a long time. Yeah, we met we met formally on a set of a, an independent movie called Bronx Paradise, and uh, you you walked in and. At the time, I didn't have sideburns or black hair. I had shaved head. Or what? And you said, uh, whose car is out there with the Elvis plate? You remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, and we became fast friends after that. And uh, we've done some work together. We've hung out together. Cruz, uh, I didn't know that you started your career in, in uh, 1964. 19, I actually have the very first pay stub from 1964. Uh, it must, it must have been background work because it was like 60 bucks or something like that, which was probably the scale for background at that time. But it was Buena Vista Productions, which is Walt Disney at the time. Yeah. I think it still is anything built is Buena Vista. But I've tried to track it down what it is. And I can't track it down because that's the only information I have is the pay stuff. It right. doesn't have the name of the program or the movie. Oh. But uh, that was my, it looked like my official first paycheck, 1964. And that was with Mary Tyler Moore? No, the uh, that was my first my first speaking part. Now it was 1968 with Mary Tyler Moore and George Papard in a movie called What's So Bad About Feeling Good, and I played uh, I played a uh, again a kid with a big mouth. What's changed? What a, what a stretch! What the right a stretch? I played a, a kid with a big mouth, and Mary Tyler Moore and George Papard are getting married at City Hall, and this, the stairs that lead up stairs to City Hall are these gigantic. A pristine, big, beautiful staircase. It's a, just a giant staircase. And I had to run from the bottom of the staircase up to nearly the top where they were holding hands and break their hands up and go through them and run, crying for my mommy. So after about 25 takes of this, I remember I'm eight years old, my father said, that's enough. The kid is not running up the stairs again. If George Papard can't get his, his holding hands and walk down the stairs right, you know. Forget <laughs> about it. And of course, an argument ensued and I didn't get fired from this one. I didn't get fired. I did get fired from a Barbara Streisand movie when I was young. This one I didn't get fired from, but uh, my, I, they cut it. I had taken like I said, twenty five or thirty takes of running up the stairs, and he was like, "Okay, I think, I think we got the kid. We're good. Let's work on George and Mary Tyler Moore right. their hands or whatever they were." So this you was know, 19, like to over direct. Yeah, right. this was nineteen sixty eight. Nineteen sixty eight. So mm-hmm. I guess if it was released in sixty eight. Then I was it probably shot in sixty seven. So you got seven. to work with Mary Tyler Moore before Elvis. Uh, when is a bad habit? Yeah, right Change around the habit. same time, probably right. Six bad habits in '69, so she probably shot that in '68. Yeah, you know, there's there's an interview where she said to Elvis, "You know, Elvis, you could really be a good actor, but you'll never be a Lou Martini." She said, that. "She said she that. knew right from the beginning." You knew right from the beginning. Yeah. This kid is special. This kid. Is. <laughs> and so then the following year, the following year is my, uh, I guess, it was the first firing of my career. <laughs> I was doing a movie called uh, Funny Girl with the great Barbara Streisand. And, uh, of course, me and my big mouth again. I was doing that, uh, playing a kid on a subway station. Not a subway, but a rail station. You know, back in the days when they had yeah. the rail stations. And right. I must have been just being a, a noisy kid because she was taking direction a couple of feet away from me. And at one point, she turned and said, somebody want to shut that kid up. So I looked her right in the face and I said, why, why don't you go fix your nose? <gasps> yeah. You don't say that to Barbara Streisand. <laughs> so the next thing I know, again, my mom and dad are running on the set and people are yelling and I'm crying. And uh, I have a great picture on my wall of the great. Remember Aunt Francis, that beautiful sure. Aunt Francis? Sure. What a nice woman. What a beautiful woman. She took me to the side. She saw how upset I was. And I was crying because I'm seeing my father and my mom getting yelled at. And they're in this argument and stuff like that. And I still have the picture on my wall. I was crying like a baby. But she explained to me. She says, Lou, she says, uh, she says, you know, I, I know you don't like the lady. And a lot of a lot of people here don't either. But we can't. 
<laughs> we can't go saying things about her nose. We know, you know, basically she was saying, you know, we know she's nasty and she's mean and she's not nice, but we can't, we can't, you know, say things like that out loud. I'm like, oh, I know. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. But that was my first firing. Your first firing. I All haven't right. been fired since. I haven't been fired since. I should say my first and only firing. Well, if Barbara's watching fired. this, uh, there might be a problem. After this. I know. I know. You know, we reached out to the director film of mine. And the first thing we had to do was, is we're like, oh, my God, that story in the picture of me and Anne Francis on the website, get that off before we make the offer to her. <laughs> she wound up passing on the movie anyway. Matter of fact, that's the King Killer movie, Gene, that you know about. Yes, of course. The that's the artist movie that we're working. Yes. That you're going to be a consultant, Don, absolutely. I'm going to be a consultant, yes. And I'm be wearing all your jewelry. Every bit of it. Every yeah. bit of it. So now uh, between 68 and then 70, 71, you did uh, some bit parts. Did you ever do stage? Back then, or were you just strictly? No, I didn't. I didn't do any. I, did, I didn't do any theater work. Uh, I I worked a lot up until my dad passed. My dad passed in seventy one. So back in the day, my dad was like when my dad worked. Everybody in the family was working. Like the Godfather, yeah. I have like ten or twelve relatives that are in the wedding scene that he got everybody background work on. And then um, one of the last memories of working with my dad was. Uh, remember the Prince Spaghetti commercial? Absolutely. Wednesday is Prince Spaghetti. Anthony, the woman out the window. Okay. Yep. Well, I was supposed to do that commercial. Matter of fact, the gentleman just passed that did the commercial. May may he rest in peace. I just saw something on TV about a month ago. He had just passed. But they were supposed to shoot that in New York, and I was supposed to do the commercial. Well, the night before we're getting ready to shoot, my father gets a phone call that for some reason they had moved the location to Boston, and we would have to leave earlier to go up to Boston to shoot the commercial. Well, my dad, being my dad, was like. You're not shooting my kid in Boston. I'm not getting up at 2 o'clock in the morning to go up to Boston. And, of course, my mother, the voice of reason, is like, are you stunned? It's a national commercial. You go to Boston. So what? You're not going to the Lower East Side. You get up a couple hours early. And I lost that job because my father wouldn't take me to Boston. But I would have been there. And that commercial ran for like 11 years. Oh, yeah. I yeah remember. The, 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 the gentleman that did the commercial did very well by that. God bless him. Very well. Well, you so know that's, what? That's actually a stop. That's from 19... From 1971, when my dad passed away, I really didn't do do much because my mom was a you know a single lady right. trying to trying to work and raise me at the same time. And I started acting in in college, basically. So I had that little lull there. But well, but college. before college, uh, okay, so you didn't get the Prince Spaghetti commercial, which we're which we're sorry uh, for, for our bank accounts, of course. Yeah, I know. But when I started promoting this interview with you online, I I said something which piqued a lot of interest in a lot of people. Uh, you know, of course, because uh, it's true, you are the only actor who had a speaking role in the original Godfather and the TV show The Sopranos. So a lot of people say, well, uh, Uncle Junior, he was Johnny, he was in Godfather too, right? And all these others. So we had a bunch of people ask who you played, and I would not give it up. Of, in lieu of anything, for them to come here tonight and hear it straight from the horse's mouth. So, Lou, tell our fans, our following, your monumental role in The Godfather. Huge, huge, gigantic. Tremendous. Screen time, tremendous screen time, everything. But if you guys remember the wedding scene, uh, J- James Conn was uh, getting flirty with one of the bridesmaids, and he, they wound up meeting. And he goes into the house and he takes her up the stairs to do the little, uh, you know, afternoon delight stuff. Well, when he's going up the stairs, if, you, if you're not paying total attention to James Conn and a bridesmaid, your eyes goes to the right a little bit, you'll see two little kids that run through the hallway, again, making little kid sounds like, bah, 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 and I run into the kitchen and run around the wedding cake. That's me, the first kid. That was, that was, a, that was, that was back in the day called a bit. That was a bit part, a bit part. Right. So now also uh, the great Tony Lip, may he rest in peace, was also in Godfather 1, but he didn't have a speaking role. Right. So that's the distinguishing thing that my publicist came up with. And then I did, I was blessed enough to do five episodes of The Sopranos. Right. The so everybody in social media land, you heard it here first on the Reminiscing with Gene Denavli podcast that the first and only person who appeared in the original Godfather and The Sopranos is Lou Martini Jr. with a Oscar winning performance well actually i was nominated i didn't win but i was nominated what what was the Best category of the year. <laughs> <laughs> oh god anytime i needed a kid with a big mouth that was me you know what i'm saying 
That I, one, yeah. I, I, Harry Tyler Moore, Barbara Streisand, the kid yeah. with the big mouth, get him. Now you were how old when you were in The Godfather? I mean, you uh, shot that in uh, seventy, I think. Right. right. So probably, uh, nine or ten. Yeah, wow. I said I worked a lot up until my dad passed in uh, the middle of seventy one. Right. So, like I said, from the age of four to like ten, I worked a lot, like all kinds of stuff. Worked right. A lot. And then, and you concentrated on school, mm-hmm. and then um, you said you got back into acting in college. What did you do between? Yeah. What happened is, is uh, long story short, about going to school. The first thing I knew is I wanted a. Don't get me wrong. I love my neighborhood where I'm from, Sunnyside, Queens. I love the guys and my my dearest friends, and you know they're still you know you know neighborhood guys. They're still always going to be in your heart and stuff. But I knew, I knew at this time that I wanted to go away to college and I wanted to get out of the neighborhood. I want to, I just wanted to do other things. I had visions of maybe being a sportscaster at this time. And a guy that had become like a stepdad to me when I was younger, after I lost my father, uh, a guy that became kind of like a stepdad to me, it was actually working with the Houston Astros baseball team in Houston. I met him one summer and he would send me autographs and all that kind of stuff. And he, when we'd come to, when he'd come to, um, New York in the summers for the games. He'd take me and my mom to the games and stuff. Great guy. Great, great, wonderful guy. And uh, so uh, when college time came to go to college, he said, you know what? You come down here and go to University of Houston. It's got a great communications program. You know, uh, I'll set you up. I'll get your car. We'll hook you all up. And, you know, you'll, you'll start, you'll, you'll start, you'll start your college stuff down here. Well, as only the Lou Martini luck would have it, the dark cloud that hangs over my head sometimes. The second day I get there, he takes a job at the Charlotte Motor Speedway and leaves. So now I'm in Houston, Texas, kid from Sunnyside, Queens. I have no idea. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking, okay, do I got to go buy myself a hat and some cowboy boots now? I mean, how do I adapt here? I I don't know nothing about this, you know? But you know what, Gene, to this day, it's the greatest thing I ever did. I've got the dearest friends. I still go back. Once or twice a year, I go to a lot of basketball games that they play in football games. I'm really close to my university, and uh, I do a lot of alumni stuff with them. And it's, it's the greatest thing I ever did because I just I just saw a whole new world, a whole different group of people, whole different experiences. But that's when I got the acting bug again because I started hosting a local TV show in Houston called uh, Potpourri. And on this TV show, remember that old show? Um, it was like a magazine-type show that did pieces on things. Oh, what was it? not an entertainment tonight, but it was kind of like that show. It, but it did pieces, not just an entertainment, but everything. Okay, uh, real life kind of stuff. It was a big show at the time. I remember it was. But this show was tailored after that. But we also threw some comedy skits in there, and I started acting again in the comedy skits, and mm. I loved it. And I guess I got the bug again. I says, you know what? I might want to do this again. I might want to do this. So as push came to shove, and I was thinking about, well, I'm going to be a sportscaster. I'm going to act. I get a job offer to go to Pikeville, Kentucky. Now, Pikeville, Kentucky is a suburb of Cincinnati. We're talking Pikeville, Kentucky, 1984, and Pikeville, Kentucky today is completely different. There was nothing there in Pikeville, Kentucky. And I said to myself, man, do I really want to move to Pikeville, Kentucky, 23 years old? Again, I don't know anybody. I don't know a soul. And start a sportscasting career in Pikeville, Kentucky. I said, you know what? If I go back to New York and get back into the acting, at least I'm amongst my family and my friends and it's a familiar atmosphere and, you know, and that was the deciding factor. I mean, today, if you were to snap your fingers and say, Hey, Lou, I'll give you the six o'clock sports anchor on ABC in New York. I would take it because I love sports. I, I, I would, I would take the job in a second. But at that time it was like, well, I'm not going to Pikeville, Kentucky. I'm not going to do this again. So I'm going back to New York and you know what? So far it's working out. It's, it's been okay. Yeah, I'd say it's working out. You know what? Well, you're considered uh, a working actor in, in a very competitive field. Yeah, I, for, yeah. I, I haven't I haven't worked in a you know in a restaurant as a bartender or catering in about uh, let's see, 2003 was a break for me when I got uh, a series called Falcone on CBS with Jason Gedrick, right? James Russo, and that was a nice little TV break for me. That opened up a lot of TV doors. That's the, that's the last time I bartended or. You know, thank God, with the grace of God, either I'm working or you got some residuals coming in. Or right, if I'm really down on my luck, I go to your house and you give me a plate of spaghetti. Which you'll right, Two you want plates. the Colonel? How's the Colonel? Where's the Colonel? She's upstairs watching the show. She said it's tremendous. Tremendous. I love the Colonel. We love the Colonel. You all love the Colonel. So uh, you mentioned before. We're just going to show a quick uh, 
picture of you in The Sopranos as Anthony Infantante. Uh, Mike, could you throw that up there for me? Look at that. You that dark hair and that's me, yeah. Clean shaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you were five five episodes. Mm-hmm. Right? I had those glasses, as a matter of fact. I took those glasses after I was done with the show. Did they know that? Yeah, they let me have the glasses. But the great, you know, it's funny, showbiz is like, okay, you can have the glasses, but don't do anything to uh, for a year, just in case, you know, we come back and we need those glasses again. So, like, you know, after a year and I was okay where I could do something, I actually changed the lenses and I used to wear those glasses. Right. Now I have it in a little, I have a little picture of myself and with the glasses, like a little Sopranos uh, memorial, uh, memorial on the, on the, uh, on my tabletop over there. So uh, the, the Sopranos was not supposed to be, was not projected to be the huge success hit it was and project uh, guys like James Gandolfini and uh, Stevie Van Zandt and, you know, everybody else into multi-stardom. Did you have a feeling uh, when you were on that set with these guys that this was something special? Well, I remember I came on the last year, the last year and a half. So actually the feeling on that set at that time was everybody was blessed to be there, first of all. I mean, right. you're just, again, shows like that, people like that, the writing, the directing, the people that you're working with, that doesn't come along all the time. So to be a small part of that, everybody knew they were blessed. But it was kind of winding down. It was, there was At that time, there was rumors of, well, is there going to be another season? Uh, uh, James Gandolfini really doesn't want to do another season. He thinks it's peaked. Is it, Are we going to go straight to a movie? And so everybody's like, oh, man, I hope my character's in a movie. I hope I don't get bumped. So it was that, it was that kind of thing. But, you know, when I first saw the pilot, you, got, you guys got to go back and see the pilot again. Go back and see the pilot. The pilot is the most amazing thing. I had not seen a show like that. People forget about the music of The Sopranos, the way they integrated the music into the show. It's some of the most – the scores and and the songs they use is amazing. And that first pilot, there was a scene where I guess where um, Jimmy's chasing somebody. uh, uh, He's chasing somebody for money. And they got – you would probably know the song. They got this great doo-wop song in the background. That just heightened everything up, and I was like, "This the the energy, the intensity was amazing for television." It was like, again, it was like watching a movie on right. TV. And if you watch every Sopranos episode on its own, it's like watching a movie. I mean, that's right. how they were done. That's how they were done. Even though it was a weekly uh, show, there was a beginning and an end to every episode. Yeah, absolutely. It was a mini movie. They, um, these episodes could live on their own independently. Right. So we have a very good friend of ours online, Ed Montalbano, who I was very honored to be at his wedding. I know his uh, f- five beautiful daughters uh, all my life, uh, the girls. Uh, he asked a question, and this is going to segue into a part of the show where uh, you're probably going to get a little red. But his question is, hey, Gene, can lose sing? And you know what, Ed? Uh, thank you for that question. We're going to go now live to a videotape no, no. of Lou in one of his vocal performances. Mike, can you bring it up so we can share it? I, I can. Let's share the screen. She's going to take me a second, but let's yeah. uh, let's yeah, do this. All right. Go ahead. Kill me. Okay. So can everybody, we can all see it, right? Yes. Okay. This so, is on the cruise to Bermuda that Lou came with us. Uh, <laughs> and this is, I didn't even know you had this. This is This is after much, much alcohol. Yes. We had the free drink package. Yes, and we you, did for a week. Okay, are you sitting behind two pianos? Is that, what is that? Back? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, was a two piano they face each other. <laughs> and They face each other and they both play songs all night. Nice. We try to stump them. Right. Okay, here we go. Yeah. No matter what you were doing, if you were doing a show, whatever, and another entertainer walked into the room, the first thing you would do is you would acknowledge that person. And I'm not even saying bring him up to sing a song, but you acknowledge him. And what these guys have done for me and Gene all week is an amazing, wonderful, fantastic thing, ladies and gentlemen, to share the stage. So give these guys that person. Are we watching the right thing? Yeah. Yeah, we sing there. Okay. Really? All right, so as they call me Louis Two Tones, I got a new Because I know one song. He calls me that because I know one song. I can do like 3,000 monologues for you and bore the shit out of you because I'm an actor. But we're going to do a song for my boy from Indiana. Because we're also Indiana. How about that? Of course, I got to work the crowd to. You know, fans out there? I forget about how bad the song is going to be. All right, so let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Said, Come on, everybody. When I was a young boy, I said, Do it all for me. Now I'm getting all the super joy. I want to know your boy. With a girl like you. 
All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> I thought you were gonna show me and Gene singing. No, where, no, no. Where is that? Is that on there? Yeah, it's on. I sent you a couple. You got one with me and Gene. Singing. Okay, that's that's an. Can we, can we show that one real quick? Yeah, but yeah. remember, all actors want to be singers, and all singers want to be actors. Okay. Is this "Rock Me Gently"? Is that the Andy Kim song we're playing next? Yeah, go ahead. Go with the. All right, here we go. We're gonna. We're just gonna go song after song now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Casey, okay, people want to know if we can sing, so let's stick it down their throat. So this is at a restaurant that I do uh, quite often on Arthur Avenue, Mike, called Rigoletto's, and uh, Lou's been so great when he comes there. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's just add it to add it to the stream. You gotta see this. This is again after a night of drinking. <laughs> You notice how serious I am about it. <laughs> I just like how the people don't even see you there. Yeah. You turns me to Wayne Newton, Gene. Look, he's bouncing. You're bouncing. Bouncing. He's bouncing. Hey, you got people up there. So look at you. All right, all right, all right, all right. I got you. No more. <laughs> I created a monster. <laughs> he, he does it all. He does it all. I created a monster. I tell you, but Mike, what I, what I was saying on the cruise in the beginning about the guys and how nice they were to me and Gene, they treated me, treated me and Gene like gods. Every night they wanted us to come up there and sing with them. It was really, really, really great. But the point that I was making, the, the one thing about Gene DiNapoli is, and this is, you know, when a guy is really a genuine good guy, because it doesn't happen in this business anymore. Back in the day when Gene was starting and when I was starting, no matter who was on stage and who walked in the room, the person on stage would say, hey, look who walked into that room. Look at Mr. Gene. Didn't say hello to Mr. Gene. Didn't. There was no there was no egos involved, yeah. no selfishness. You never get that anymore. And Gene, yeah. like I said, one of the, even when I just met Gene, I think the first time I went to go see Gene after we met, he gave me a big to do. Hey, everybody, Lou Martini Jr. from The Sopranos or whatever at that time right. I was doing. And that, that means a lot. That's Gene DiNapoli is a class act, everybody. I don't want to hear anything. That's mean. Thank you. That means uh, a lot because that's a, that's a true entertainer. That's what the entertainers. That's that's a and it was an etiquette one hundred and one. Yes. That's what entertainers what you do. Well, you that's when you, other entertainers. You, it's when you grow up in the business or you're taught by somebody. So many people today they get into the business because they think they could sing or they're living a dream and they don't know etiquette. But I will tell you, one time I introduced you and it backfired on me. <laughs> it was the first time it was the first time I played BB Kings in the city and here I am uh Mike is this there's 200 people in the room the place is packed and there's a line of people waiting to take pictures with me and I says and my friend from the soprano Lou Martini and everybody got off my line and they made a line oh, at BB Kings at BB Kings Wow! It's like at the supermarket. When 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 a line opens up, everybody wants to you know get on the short line. That's right. Oh, short line. Yeah. That's oh, right. Charlene, Lou, you know Charlene? Charlene yeah. Said uh, better than New Year's Eve. Wow. Oh, that's my uh, that's my Jersey neighbor. Hey, oh, Charlene. Yes. Hey, and also our good friend Ralph Bracco commented wow. uh, he wants you to do a cameo in Murdered by the Mob. Okay, done. Me and Ralph did a, a couple of short films together. Had a lot of fun with Ralph. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I was in the I was in the cast before Ralph. Uh, I don't know if Ralph owns the show now, but he came in. The original people with the show have passed. Uh, Ron Ron Pacey and um, and Joni, really really nice people. And I was in the original production of that. On uh, I think they're still doing it. A restaurant called Arno's. Yeah, it, we, had a lot of, we had a lot of fun doing that show, and I don't think I got to do that show with Ralph. I think Ralph came after. Right, I was, he came after you. But I would, I just to have a couple of laughs with Ralph. That'd be great. Let we me know, should, Ralph, anytime. We should all do it together. Anytime, yeah. Let's do a, a celebrity night of it. You know? it. So now, uh, in addition to Sopranos, I mean, this list of shows you've been on, uh, and I'm not even talking about the shows that where you did one episode and got. Pushed to the wayside. We're talking about uh, uh, crashing. Uh, one of my favorites, vinyl. Orange is the new black. 
uh, Sneaky Pete, and, and more importantly, the Deuce with James Franco. Yeah, the Deuce was a great experience working with Jimmy Franco. Yeah. Phenomenal experience, phenomenal experience. Yeah, that was good. So we shot that. Uh, I did. Uh, I did the. Did I do the pilot? Yeah, I did the. I did the pilot, and it was supposed to be recurring at the time, but it didn't work out to be recurring. But I was his first boss. If you guys remember the show, I, I fired him from my bar in Brooklyn, and he goes to the city and he gets a job, at, you know, in the Times Square area and hooks up with all the mobsters and stuff down there. Right. But uh, yeah, I got I got something coming on actually Thursday night. I got. Uh, we'll, we'll get I, yeah, we'll get to that. We'll okay, get to that. okay. But but in addition to being that, you also are the king of never picked up TV shows, right? <laughs> you've done more. You've done more pilot episodes and shows that just never got picked up. Oh man, I tell I tell you, I'll I'll tell you one quick story about the one that I thought was going to be a career maker. Yeah. Okay? Uh, back in the day. And I'm not going to say the actor's name, but back in the day, I was cast to play the lead in an NBC show. James Burroughs, the king of all sitcom creators, a James Burroughs NBC show called Goody and Company. And it was about a Boston family that ran a deli. And I was supposed to be the lead, the son, where Lainey Kazan was going to play my mom and the actor that was going to play my father. I went, I got flown to Hollywood late Thursday night for a, for a Friday, uh, what they call test. And the great thing about this was is it was like a one-shot deal. Usually you have to go through five or six auditions. You have to go to a network audition, a producer's audition, and all this kind of stuff. And I guess somebody had been fired from the part and from the show, and they were getting ready to do the table read on, on Monday and shoot the thing on the following Friday. So I'm like, this is great, three scenes. So I, wa- I get to Hollywood uh, Thursday night. I get up Friday morning. I go to the studio. There's a room full of like 30 people, network executives, you know, all kinds of stuff. But as an actor, you dream of this because there's one shot. It's great. This is great. I did the three scenes. I nailed it. They loved me. I walked out of the room. I called my mom. God bless my mom because she was always the first call. Still is always the first call when something happens. I love your mom. Miss your mom. And I said, Mom, we got this. James Burroughs, NBC, my own sitcom. My life is going to change. This is what I've dreamt of. Well, Saturday morning. Uh, this act had gotten some, uh, somewhat of a domestic dispute. It hit all the papers and, uh, Monday the show was scrapped. Totally scrapped. Wow. Couldn't I get the call that the show was not moving forward. And if it was to move forward, they'd let me know. So I guess they chose not to recast or whatever they, whatever reason they chose. Right. Uh, yeah, that would have been a big one. That would have been a, ca- a casualty of somebody else's problem. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, also, from what I know of the situation, from what I know of the person and stuff, the person got totally railroaded on it. It didn't, it didn't happen. Like the papers, you know, fake wow. news. It was fake Sorry. news back then also, too. It Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Yeah. Um, we got a picture of you in, in what's considered the first reality show. You did a show uh, called The Gastineau Girls. Yeah, yeah. One of the first. One of the first. There he is with yeah. that. That's with Lisa Gastineau and uh, Brittany Gastineau. Lisa Gastineau was the ex-wife of the football player, right? Uh, Mark Gastineau with the Jets. And they had a reality show about them, you know, the mother-daughter, beautiful girls running around in that stuff. And I was their doorman who narrated the show. And I did the first season of that, and it did great. The numbers did great. As a matter of fact, I did that at the same time uh, I was on Soprano. So I had two shows at the same time, which is phenomenal. It's fantastic. Fantastic. And then uh, the second season renewal came, and they decided they didn't want the doorman anymore. And the second season without me lasted one episode. Really? What does that tell you, folks? Leave the doorman in the show. Always. (laughs) Wasn't the doorman in the Jeffersons an integral part of that show? Absolutely. And how about Carlton, your doorman on Rhoda? I just watched Rhoda the other night. Right. Carlton, your doorman. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. you know, you've done you've done some work. You've done a lot of work with ex Sopranos alumni, uh, but uh, we got a picture of of you and Catherine. Uh, Mike, could you put the picture up? Of um, there you go, the douche, the douche, me and Kathy. So tell me, what's with the priest outfit, Lou? Oh, that was a movie we did a few years ago called To Redemption." It's on Amazon. You can see it on Amazon. And it's about uh, a family with some really, really dark secrets. 
And one of the secrets is I was uh, their priest who was actually molesting two of their kids at the time. Really, really dark role. Interesting story about that is the, the whole reason I took that role was for this one scene that was just a phenomenal scene where this guy, this priest, came out to his bishop. And he basically fessed up to his sins to the bishop and was asking for help. And I thought it was a phenomenal thing because it showed the human side of this guy. He admitted he had problems, that he was wrong and he was sick, and he was begging the church to help him. So wow! the day before we get ready to shoot that scene, the producer comes up to me and says, oh, Lou, I got some bad news. We're not going to be able to do that scene. I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like the best scene in a movie. You know, he says, well, we're having a problem in the Catholic Church. And I'm like, but that's the whole deal, man. Right. That's real. You, you can't just show this guy as a one-dimensional monster. I mean, these pedophiles and stuff, they're real people. This is a, this is a great way to see to, to go into their minds and see why they're doing this and whatever. And the guy was asking, asking for help. And somebody from the Catholic Church got a hold of it and said, you're not, you're not, you're not shooting that scene. And they bowed down to the Catholic Church. I was really disappointed. Because that was the sole part. I mean, it's still a good movie, and I'm happy with, you know, what I did, the work I did with it, and everybody was phenomenal. And Kathy Narducci and Jane McCaffrey and, uh, you know, a couple of the young kids that were in it were fantastic, you know. Yes. But it's just a shame that, you know, somebody got to somebody and said, we don't want that. And the producers kind of said, okay, well, we'll cut that. So, right. It happened. It's, an it's on Amazon. Right, right. We're going to look at that. Uh, Mike, you got a couple of pictures there of, of Lou and his Sopranos alumni. Can you throw them up? Uh, first off, the picture. Uh, all right, so there we got uh, Vinny Pastore, uh, Federici. We got the great director, Paul Borghese. Uh, who's the gentleman to left? I can't see. Oh, too much. his name is on the tip of my tongue. He's a, he, uh, as an Irish name, a great, first of all, great stage actor, too. Phenomenal, phenomenal stage actor. God, it's killing me. I don't remember his name. He looked for me. That's why I asked. Yeah, he's so good. And, and the guy at the end? And the guy in the middle. Is uh, of course he's a prolific playwright. I've done a bunch of his yeah. plays. Richard Pateri, who right. also is a wonderful guy, wonderful playwright. Also has had some TV things produced, some movies produced. That's Richie Pateri. Yeah, well, I met yeah, Richie. Of course, cousin Vinny, Vinny, looking looking slim and fit on the end there. Is of always. course, of course. Yeah, I met Rich when you were doing uh, Centennial Casting. Yeah, right, right, right. right. I actually drove him home that night. Right, right, right. And the next picture, Mike, from the Sopranos era. But that's the one we spoke that's about. Dinner. That's the dinner I crashed. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not sure which I have that one. I have Sopranos too. And that's all I have from the no, that's, that's the right one. That's the right one. That's the right one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Tony Darrow is going to be our guest next week, Lou. Uh, great, great. And Tony's an old friend of the family's. Uh, people came, know, people, a lot of people don't know that Tony's also a singer too. Tony started out as a singer. We're going to very much touch on that. Uh, subject, you know, Lou. What makes our show different here is that uh, I'm a I'm a a student of music and and film, so I know when actors do songs and singers do acting, and I try to let everybody know they have other talents uh, other than just what they're known for. Right, right. You know, like you with the singing of you know, <laughs> rock me gently. Yeah, right. people are gonna go out and Spotify and look up Lou Martini. Rock me gently. Yeah, yeah, I have a bunch of drunken karaoke on the net. People be able to find that stuff easy. That's great. Um, so one of my favorite actors since back in the day, uh, Eric Roberts. Yeah. I mean, if that guy didn't win an Academy Award for uh, uh, Pope of Greenwich Village, yeah. I don't know why, but you just yeah. recently did something with him, right? Yeah, I did. I've done four movies with Eric. I've done four yeah. movies now with Eric. Four movies. And I tell you, Eric Eric said one of the nicest things that was ever said to me. And I always, I, again, I repeat this story to a lot of people because we're in, we're in kind of a crummy business with a lot of crummy people. And when somebody does something really nice, I like to make sure that everybody knows they did it, you know. And at this time when I was doing a movie with Eric, I guess we were just, you know, shooting a breeze and, and just having to talk about the business and stuff like that. And I was kind of in a down period at this time and and wondering what was going to happen next and, you know, worried about getting a little older, a little grayer and blah, 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 and the parts and, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. And basically he told me, he says, Louis, he says, look, he says, I'm a fan of your work. You know, I've seen your work. I mean, I'm working with you now. He says, 
you're phenomenal. You're fantastic. You know, keep, keep keep fighting, man. He says, the only difference between me and you, and this is Eric Roberts. He says, the only difference between me and you is I got luckier, which meant the world to me, man. The world For Eric Roberts to say the only difference between right. me and you, he got a little bit luckier, right. you know, to be at, at, at the level that he's at right now. Well, you you know, could that, see in the was, picture. It was a tremendous thing to say. To tremendous, me. yes. You could see in the picture with you and him, which we're going to show right now, um, See, a nah. guy doesn't a guy doesn't hug you like that unless he's genuine. Yes, yes. So, yes. so th- that's a good thing to know that Eric uh, is that way. But I think he's a great actor, and uh, I think he should have gotten an Academy Award nomination for the Pope. If you're an Eric Roberts fan, you got to see Runaway Train. It was Runaway, Runaway Train, phenomenal. Him and him and John Voight together, yes. and Eric again is tremendous in it. Great. But the movie you did with him was called Redemption. No, Eric Roberts' movies I did was called West End. Is the West End, and that picture is from a movie called Oiled Up. That's the last two I did with him. And what kind of character did you play in those movies? Uh, in West End, I was a uh, a nightclub manager that I uh, kind of a sleazy nightclub manager that I get whacked by Eric Roberts' mafia family. And then in Oiled Up, I was a degenerate gambler. And I owed Eric some money, and him and his boys took care of me. That's actually a shot on the pier where mm. they tied me up and took care of me on the pier. Mm. I work with Eric is, is fun, man. Fun guy. And, again, like I said, genuine. Yeah. No BS. Genuine good guy. He loves people. He cares for people. Loves animals, too, which is great. In my book, if you love animals, that's that's 9 out of 10 for me. The big animal, animal, uh, animal I, person. I, could, I couldn't find a picture uh, of the two years together. But you worked with uh, Annabella in a movie. I mean, how was that uh, working with her? I mean, again, you know, the, 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 the consummate professional. She's yeah. an underrated actress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, she was, you know, at the time, again, I guess, again, it, it, it gets a little difficult as you get older, this business as a, as a female. If Annabella was, was her age back then, but yeah, if, if Annabella was her age back then now, She'd be working. She'd be working like crazy again because if, if the, the business is really looking to diversify. It's actually over diversified. You know what I'm saying? But at that time, for a good five years there, she was like the number one ethnic actress for, for scripts to go to and TV shows. Yes. Yeah, she had a really, really nice career for such. And, it, and she's a beautiful yeah. lady as well. Great, great actress. Great, great. You great won uh, best actor award in uh, in Houston, Texas. Ah, very proud of this. It looks like a People's Choice Award. Hold on. Okay, okay. look at this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're actually going to get a visual. Visual prop. We're, we're cutting to a prop. Okay. Look uh, at that. Lou, tell us. Pick it up a little bit, Lou. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful crystal? Yeah. yeah. And what is my it? First act, my first acting award. Really? Yeah. What it's year was that? 2013. And you're going to get a kick out of this story. Please. It's a movie called Suicide Notes. Uh, a comedy that we shot down in Texas. And uh, I was supposed to do it with Morgan Fairchild, but she dropped out at the last minute. So basically, I was the only name in it. But great, great local cast. They were all great. Uh, Sue Rock and people that I worked with, they were great. So it's a movie about a playwright writes a play about an actor committing suicide on stage. And I get the idea along with uh, this wacky producer, Sue Rock. Maybe we can get real actors to commit suicide on stage and it'd be a big hit. Oh, my God. So it's a really, really dark comedy. But here's the catch. Not only not only do I own the theater and direct all the plays in the theater, I'm a nudist. So I'm pretty much naked from the waist up the whole movie. There's a couple of quick glimpses of maybe a butt cheek here and there. But I play a nudist. It's it got me the award, baby. It got me the award. That's that's. That's great. The best actor in a feature film. This was 2013. And I was up against uh, Edward James Olmos. Oh. Eric Roberts was nominated. Uh, wow. Uh, a couple of big, big names. So I thought I had no chance. And a really nice thing about that is when they introduced me to get the award, they said it was the first time in the history of the Houston, uh, the Houston Festival that the award was unanimous by the critics. Wow. So that's pretty wild. So that's, that's also right. on Amazon. It's, you can see it on Amazon. It's called Suicide Notes. Suicide Notes. Wacky, and wacky, wacky black comedy. We're going to look for everybody, please. I'll look this up so we Suicide can see Suicide Notes. Uh, now, uh, you know, Lou, I got to tell you, I don't watch many TV shows that deal with 
real life situations. I live in my own little bubble. Okay. Um, so when you're on TV, I have to watch these shows because you're my friend and I, I reveal your talent. But one of the most uh, realistic shows is uh, SUV. SVU. 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 I do the same thing. Yeah. I call it STD. Boy, I I everything. Uh, and I, uh, I, I really don't like to watch uh, those shows, but I do. And we have a clip of one of your uh, one of you. Now you were on that a few times, correct? Well, actually, the, the episode that I just shot was my seventeenth episode of the Law and Order family in general. And now I have a recurring role on SVU. I think this is going to be my. Uh, I think I shot three episodes now as this character. And okay. after the clip, I'll, I'll tell you the history of the character. It's pretty interesting. Okay, Mike, let's go to the videotape. Let's roll Lou Martini Jr. in. Great. G- great. What what was your what's your character's name in that? So my character's name is Ron Fredo. See how everything comes in full circle? It's pretty strange. <laughs> Fredo like the godfather. <laughs> And what happened is when I when I shot that the first of the two episodes that I did last year, when I got hired, my name was like Ron Parker, or you know, it just was a guest spot. It wasn't going to be recurring or anything. So I get to my dressing room the day I'm supposed to shoot, and there's a sticker on my door that says Fredo. Now I'm thinking somebody's playing a joke on me. Maybe the director, Mike Smith, who I know worked worked with in a couple episodes. But this was right around the Chris Cuomo thing. Do you remember the Chris Cuomo yeah. incident? Sure. Where somebody called him Fredo, and he said it's a it's a derogatory whatever, and you know. He did all that kind of stuff. So when I go to set, I'm like, all right, Mike, who put the Fredo sticker on my door? He says, no, no, Lou. He says, that's going to be a recurring character. Now, we, we want you to play this lawyer, Ron Fredo, and we want you to recur on the show. So I'm like, fantastic. So now I just did my, uh, I guess, third or fourth episode is Fredo. And actually, we'll be on this Thursday night. We'll be on the premiere. And it's a really, really controversial episode for SVU. So I think it's on 10 o'clock Thursday night on NBC. Don't miss it. You'll see a little more Fredo, and it's a really – and I'll tell you, too, also, Mariska and Peter Scanavino and all the guys in SVU, the nicest set I've ever been on in the business. Nobody treats you better as, as, a, as a guest or a background actor, whatever you do at SVU. Just a wonder, wonderful, wonderful set. Wonderful set. I love That's them. Fabulous. Great to me. They're great to me. That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, there's two other pictures I want to show before uh, we get to our final segment. Oh, it looks like we got blocked. Uh with that segment. So uh, it's okay. We'll, we'll apologize. And not what, block, what got blocked? Uh, it says NBU, NBCU creative content has taken action on your video. You got that popped up by Eugene? Yep. yep. Was it manifest? I don't know. No, it, it's uh, SVU. SVU. Wow. Yeah. You showed an SVU. You can yeah, show an SVU? And then they store it, so we got to delete it. <laughs> oh, well, so it aired too late. Yeah. Okay, Mike. Uh, Sorry, show you. SVU. I, I'm promoting the show. I thought that'd be a good thing. Yeah. I didn't show a clip from the show that's coming up, obviously. No. It's an course. old clip. Right. Uh, My apologies to NBC. You haven't a videotape. Did not know. Yes. Thought it was okay to show an old clip. Sorry, guys. Of course. We thought with everything on YouTube, we thought everything was public. Yeah. You know, yeah. Especially if we're going to promote the show. Yeah. So, um, you know, you uh, joined me on stage a few times and. Riverdale, where I do, where I did a show with multiple acts, and uh, you know, if I ever become a, a singer or an actor and I win an Academy Award, you could always say that Gene DiNapoli sang back up for you. So, Mike, show the picture of uh, me and Lou on stage. Uh, it's a little blurry, but I think we could we could see who's in what. Yeah. So there's you, Lou, and there's you me. You made fun of my shirt. You made fun. And actually, though, see, there's nothing like singing with a live band. That was the best I've ever sang in my life. I was great that night, may I say, Gene. Yes, you are. I yes. was really good with the band that night. Yes. Really. I'm so, I'm so glad you're so humble, Lou. I really am. <laughs> and, uh, Look at that let's, shirt. Look at that. That's a beautiful shirt. You did like you my great. shirt. You were great. And let's go to the other picture, Mike. Which one, which so, one Gene? Which uh, one? The one backstage with oh, me, and Lou. Yeah. yeah. So, Lou, here's uh, uh, me, you, uh, Jeannie Claire, Lloyd Diamond, and our dear friend Peppy, uh, who is no longer with us. But uh, one of a kind, Peppy. One yeah, I actually blew that up for you. I got next time I see you, I'm going to give you a copy. Oh, I'd love to have that. I'd yes, that. of course. I'd love that. So, have in addition to uh, acting and singing, you've also been a very avid writer, 
And I know that coming up, you're going to live one of your dreams. And one of your dreams is, um, let, let's, it's not, it's not, it's no, not, I, it's not a secret. You, you want to wear your jumpsuit? You <laughs> want to be Elvis Presley. Yes, really. So, so you wrote a, a, a screenplay called uh, King Killers, uh, where a down and out Elvis impersonator. Uh, I wonder where I got my inspiration from. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> but uh, so, how is that? Is that coming to fruit? We're really, we're really close. We have a we have a co production deal with a company called Evolutionary Films in London. Uh, you know what? I should have sent you the poster. Do I have time to send you the poster? I think you, so. You, you you can. The only thing is, I I think they actually blocked the video. I'm not sure if it's live anymore. Okay. They okay. didn't. Uh, but they you know, that's okay. But the poster is in a, in a jumpsuit. Yeah. But we we could if you want to send it, we could take this. We can cut that part out where it violated right. that, and then we could piece it together and. and Upload it again right. if they remove it for some reason. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do that. You know what, Lou? All my guests have been so great. We're gonna have to do part two in the coming year. So we'll we'll do an, another follow up. Look at that, King Kill. Is He's that you in the jumpsuit? That's me in the jumpsuit. Where'd you get that jumpsuit? I is a knife. I think it's a cool idea. Where'd you get that jumpsuit? I got the jumpsuit from your friend, the Philly Elvis, Nick Ferraro. They call him the Philly Elvis. Good guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yours didn't fit. Remember, we tried to when I was going to do a photo shoot like a year ago. Yours yeah. didn't fit for some reason. Well, it fit around the belly, but I think I'm a little shorter than you. Yeah, it just it didn't work out. Didn't worry. But I used your jewelry, like I said. Yes, you did. But King Killer, yeah, we got a deal with Evolutionary Films. Uh, we're going after some directors right now. We have some financing. We, we're hoping to shoot it sometime late next year. And I would like to, if we could, if we could. And remember, Gene, I got the house now for us. Me and Gene are going to do the Graceland thing this year together for the Elvis week in August. Man, if somehow we could be like in production at that time and I can get a couple of days at Graceland, that'd be well, great. We'll take, we'll take an iPhone 10 and we'll make it work one yeah. way or another. I wrote a story about this, uh, this uh, middle-aged, uh, middle-life crisis guy, Elvis tribute artist, is going through. And his mom, who killed his father when he was young because she was obsessed with Elvis Presley and she was teaching her son everything she knew about Elvis Presley and the dad didn't want to hear. So she gets out of prison and decides that she wants her son to be the next king of rock and roll and win the big Elvis contest in Memphis. So she goes around the country uh, with my girlfriend, who's just like Ginger Alden, no coincidence, of course, mm. uh, <laughs> whacking all the big Elvis tribute artists across the country. It's called King Killer. Right. Very, very funny script. And so we got to deal with this. And now we're just hoping to, uh, to get a director attached and then start casting and shooting. I'm sure you will, though. Okay, uh, real quick, guys. Just so you know, the video is blocked. It's not being streamed live right now. Okay. So we're still recording. So what this is done, I'll offload it. I'll you cut the part it. that violates out and this part out until it'll flow. You got it. Okay. Well, so they I, blocked the whole video now, huh? They did. They blocked the whole video for that. Now, I don't understand. People have whole episodes of things on YouTube they put on. Them. They stream live TV and, and, it, and, it, and it goes. I know. I know. Oh. Well, we didn't do it with the intention of offending anybody. We did no, it to let no. people know the careers and, and the outcomes and the way things are done. But and to watch the know, show Thursday night. What? And to watch the show Thursday night. And to yeah. watch the show. But, you know, some people think, you know, we don't make money off it, so we don't see any harm in it. But, right. uh, you know, Lou, uh, we've gotten some great comments. We, we'd like you to go back and watch the video uh, when it is up. Uh, wonderful stories. Very talented guy. Uh, always he watch. He knows Jesse. <laughs> what? Oh, hi, Jesse. Jesse. Yeah. Could you get the cat's ass out of the hi, way? Jesse. Thank you. Uh, hi, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Jesse. So, uh, and it, let me ask you this uh, very quickly: How are you dealing with COVID and and being cooped up? And you're doing a lot of writing, right? Well, we just went back to work. Like I said, I, I you know I just shot the. Um, I just shot the SVU a couple of weeks ago. I'm actually going to do a little guest spot on Blue Bloods that I'm shooting next week. Mm. Be the first time I'm doing Blue Bloods, so that'll be fun. Yeah, the industry is coming back slowly with all the, uh, you know, wearing a mask in between takes and and a lot of plastic up, and you got to take the test every day and things like that. It's it's adding it's adding a lot of money, a lot of money to budgets. The, the one the unfortunate thing about it is like some of the independent things that we're close to doing is, I mean, if, if it adds three hundred thousand dollars to your budget. You know, you just you got you got to put stuff on hold right now. But the big guys like NBC and people like that, they're all slowly coming back to work because they can afford the the COVID uh, 
measures that they have to take with the social distancing and the sterilization and all that right. stuff. The big guys can do that. So it's it's going to start to slowly get a little busier again for us, which is good. Well, we hope so for not only your sake, for everybody's sake. Uh, so, Lou, we want to thank you. And uh, by the way, YouTube, uh, we do this on YouTube, and it was still going there. It's, it's still streaming on YouTube. Yeah. So everybody still sees it. We might have to move this over to YouTube permanently because uh, if Facebook is going to continue to control. Uh, Again, it doesn't make any sense because no. like that show, you can go on demand and watch it. It's on Amazon. It's everywhere. It's a show, right. it's a show from last year. And I, we actually got the clip from YouTube. So that's why maybe it's still playing on YouTube. Maybe Facebook is more strict. I, I maybe. 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 We'll, we'll edit that out. We'll edit that part out and we'll restream yeah. it on Facebook. And we'll, edit, we'll restream it. We'll, we'll take the audio to go to ItalianAmericanRadio.com. Right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we do every week, will you please give our guest and my dear friend, Mr. Lou Martini Jr., the biggest round of applause we could give him. Thanks, Lou. Hey, thank you, Gene. You know, I love you like a brother. This was fun. Thank you. Congratulations on the show. Thank you. Great, great luck with the show. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Right, thanks for meeting you. Thanks for all the help. Thank you, Lou. Uh, God willing, we'll see everybody soon, right? Yeah. See you real soon. And once we get the time out, yes. Lou, I'll send you the link where you can share it with that clip, um, you know, cut out on Facebook. Okay. Let me give you a virtual hug. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> TCB, baby. TCB, baby. Love you guys. See you, pal. Thank you, Lou. Take care. Wow. That's, you know what, Gina, that, that, that's terrible, isn't it? It's, you know, it's just the way it is right now. And, you know, I'm hearing there's different ways now to do things. Uh, there's a new platform out. I heard my wife's going to talk to me later about it. But, um, you know, listen, I love Facebook, but I've been hearing too many things. And if they're going to control what we do, even for a 20 or 30 or 40 second clip, maybe it's not the way to go anymore. So right. if you're watching us here, please go to my channel Type in Gene DiNapoli on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel to see everything we do. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, Mike, uh, next week's guest, another wonderful actor, uh, Tony Darrow, who was in uh, Analyze That, The Sopranos, uh, and more notably uh, for the scene, he's the guy that Joe Pesci cracks in the head in Goodfellas. Right. Uh, so Tony will be here next week with us. Uh, so we hope everybody is going to join us uh, to give everybody a preview of what's coming up. So after Tony on uh, November 23rd, how many people remember a song goes, sugar, dun, 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 uh, honey. that's right. We have the great Ron Dante, the voice of the Archies and the voice of the Cufflinks, producer of nine Barry Manilow albums, and currently – a member of the Turtles, Ron Dante will be with us. You got that banner you want to throw up? I don't have. I don't have the banners after you know after after Tony's. Okay. I'll, then I'll on the thirtieth, we're going to bring in a friend of mine who's probably one of the greatest Italian tenors on the planet, Aaron Caruso, who not only is a singer but a fine actor. Uh, he was actually in a play called The Great Lanza, uh, which was uh, produced by Tommy Mottola. Uh, so he's going to be the 30th. And then finally, coming full circle, our first guest was supposed to be Larry Chance of Larry Chance and the Earls. Larry had gotten sick and was so pleased and happy that Larry will be with us on December the 7th. Great. Am I correct? December yeah, 7th. The 7th. Yeah. Okay. You ready for my next two, ladies and gentlemen? My next two. Is everybody out there ready for my next two? I think so. Here think we go. To- <laughs> Excuse me, I gotta get drum roll. Yeah, I was, I was trying to find a drum roll real quick. I didn't know it. Do the drum roll. <laughs> How about a little crazy horn? Crazy horn. <laughs> December 14th, one of the original teen idols, <laughs> the man who made Venus in Blue Jeans a worldwide hit, Mr. Jimmy Clanton, will be with us. Jimmy, she's Venus in blue jeans. Come on, you can sing out there. And then we're working on him today. He called me. I'm going to call him tomorrow. He said the date looks good. Now, Mike, this is a surprise for you. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. One of the biggest hit songs on the planet, 1960. It was an itsy bitsy. That's right. Brian Highland is going to be our guest. 
We're looking at the 21st of December. So we need you to join our page, subscribe to my channel on YouTube so that you will be notified of everything we do. And wait till they hear, wait till they hear January, Gene. Okay. It, nobody's commenting. We, well, because they're not seeing it right now. Oh, so they all got blocked off. All, all of Facebook is down. Now just YouTube is streaming. Oh, okay. Yeah, hmm. but it's okay. But we'll put it back up. You know, we'll cut that part out. Yeah. We'll put it back up. I'm going to cut it out. And uh, so if we have any Elvis Presley fans in the house, do we have any Elvis Presley fans in the house? I think we do. So Elvis birthday, January. We're going to make all January Elvis month. We have two confirmed guests. And I tell you, Mike, I am so tickled because these gentlemen and these ladies that we're hoping to get do not do many interviews. First off, on my birthday, January 4th, we have one of Elvis Presley's stepbrothers. Billy Stanley, whose mom married Elvis's dad in 1960, is going to be with us on January 4th. And then on January the 11th, how many people remember when Elvis Presley played in the round in his black leather suit? Do you remember that? I do. Well, that was called the 68 Special. They named it the comeback, but Elvis never went away. So technically, there's no comeback. But we have director, Mr. Steve Binder, who nurtured that show and gave Elvis advice because he had done so many shows before. We're going to have Steve Binder on the show to answer a lot of questions and debunk a lot of myths that have been spoken about that show. So if anybody has any questions they'd like us to ask Billy or Steve, send it to me through the inbox of Reminiscing with Gene DiNapoli, and we're going to put them on the screen. We're going to talk to them. Uh, we're working on, we have a lovely lady who starred in one of Elvis's movies called Kissing Cousins. Cynthia Pepper will be with us. We're working on a date. And then we also have Elvis's tour manager, a gentleman by the name of Charles Stone, who's going to be with us. So we're just, we're juggling the dates now because who's going to go away for the holidays and come back? We don't want to inconvenience anybody. So right. join the channel, subscribe, and don't miss any of our shows. They're up for all the world to see. Right. And I have, a, I might have a surprise for you, Gene. You do. I might have someone for uh, Elvis month. I'll talk to you off the air first because wow. it, might be, it might be a little controversial, but it might be it might be worth seeing this, this the side of um, Elvis. Okay, we could we could we could do an additional show in addition to what the others are. Or it could be a fifteen minute segment. It doesn't have to be absolutely, a absolutely. Okay. So, Mike, uh, I did another wonderful show. Yes. Let's uh, thank our sponsors once again. Uh, for those of you in the Bronx, please visit Pure Organic Dry Cleaners. 3166 East Tremont Avenue. See Wally. Mention our podcast. Pay for three items. Get the fourth one free. Our friends Howard and Karen at Dream Destination Travel for the best in cruise and destination weddings. Check them out on their phone and their website. Mention uh, the podcast. Get a free American Express gift card, either $50 or $100. CBD, SweetHeal.com for gummies, oils, and anything you want natural to help you get along with any ailments, please mention my name. Get 20% off your orders and a free gift. And last but not least today, Francisco, this creative CPA, accounting, taxes, and estate planning services. Everything is on our page under offers. Uh, we have two sponsors which are in contract right now. They're going to add them to our list. Uh, wonderful. I, I love doing this. Uh, something that me and Mike will be doing over the next week, we're going to start. I was recently asked to interview 40 lovely young ladies from the Miss International World Pageant, which will take place on a Bahama cruise in February. So we're going to be interviewing all 40 ladies, maybe uh, five, six a night. 15 minute segments. So make sure you join our page so you know when that happens. And Mike, I'm actually going to dress up for that. I'm going to wear a tuxedo. Tuxedo, nice. I like Here that. she is, yeah. Miss International World. You remember him? Of course. Of yes. Course. 
And uh, not on a sad note, but a happy note that he lived a long and wonderful life. We want to send our best out to the family of Alex Trebek, our yeah, uh, longtime host of a great show called Jeopardy. Uh, wonderful. You learn a lot from shows like that. Uh, so check us out. If you, if you happen to know anybody that wants to sponsor anybody, ladies and gentlemen, we're always looking for people. Our shows are seen across the United States, probably all over the world at some point. And it's a reoccurring ad, which never dies. That's right. So if you have a small or big business, uh, we think you should contact me. Uh, matter of fact, if Joe Remini is listening, uh, Joe, I unfortunately lost your number. Can you please send it to me again? Uh, I'm sorry about that. That's not how I do things, but uh, please send it to me again, Joe. Listen to our shows on ItalianAmericanRadio.com. Check out producer Mike's other shows on the J12 Podcast Network. And uh, check out the website, GeneDinapoli.com, for all my upcoming shows and my projects. Mike, you got anything to add? No, I, I think you said it all. I think we'll... We'll straighten this out and we'll we'll post it back up to Facebook so people could see it. You know what? Before you leave, put that picture up of Lou and Barbara. Can you do that? I can. This is before Lou Martini got fired by Barbara Streisand. <laughs> this is this is on the kit on the, on the set of Funny Girl. You think he's pointing to her nose? I don't think that's Barbara. Is that Barbara? No, it doesn't look like her, is it? No, but that's on the set. But that's so cute. <laughs> that is. But Mike, thank you yeah. again once again. We need to talk about uh, other things we need to do. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as we say every week, stay well, stay safe, be kind. Yes. And God bless you. Take care, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mike. Cheers.